Good evening, Bethel Church. Woo uh, who is excited to be at church tonight? Okay, this side is definitely excited to be at church tonight. Who else is excited to be at church tonight? Yay! Hey, tonight is, uh, I can already feel the fire of God. I feel like tonight is going to be a special night. So I'm just going to, I'm going to open up with a testimony about what happened last week Sunday. So if you were here last week Sunday, uh, Jess threw out the net and we had a bunch of people uh, get saved. And one of those people who got saved, yeah, if you wouldn't mind, if everyone could just stand with me quickly, if you're sitting at the back, that'd be amazing. I'm going to start over again just because <laughs> I can. <laughs> All right. So testimony time. So last week, Jess threw out the net to get people saved. And we love people getting saved, right? Amen. You got saved once upon a time. That's why you're here. Because somebody preached the gospel and told you about Jesus. And um, there was a wonderful lady who got saved this side. I won't mention her name. Um, and anyway, she came up afterwards and got prayed for and set free um, from a whole bunch of stuff. And afterwards, she came to me. She said to me, hey, do you remember me? And I kind of looked at her. I said, yeah, I kind of remember you. Long story short is two months prior, I was at, uh, is it Olive Garden? Olive Garden, <clears throat> someone gave me a gift voucher, went there, and my wonderful waitress, I just, I felt God while she was serving, and I just began to preach the gospel, and I told her, hey, listen, you need to know Jesus, He loves you, and I said, I feel like you've been in anxiety, and God wants to set you free, and as she was walking away, I kind of grabbed her hand, and I began to pray for her, and I could feel the presence of God on her. Anyway, that was her two months later. She, got, she gave her life here, came on her own with somebody else. So praise Jesus for that. So God is doing it in Reading as well. She's a Reading local. She gave her life to the Lord, and we love that. Amen. All right, so why don't you turn to someone, say hello. If you, if you don't know someone, greet yourself, and then we're going to go straight into worship.
we teach you a new song tonight? I gotta be honest, I was going through it a couple months ago, um, just struggling with depression and discouragement. And oddly enough, I woke up in the middle of the night at like 3 a.m. and this song came to me. Um, and it felt, I say ironic, because it was the complete opposite of what I was feeling. And um, just amazing for the Lord to show up in that way and give me the answer in the middle of my, uh, my valley, in the middle of the battle. And so we're gonna try it tonight. and make this declaration.
Come on, can we lift that up again? I won't let.
are good. Lord, you are good. Oh, you are good. Oh, you are good. You're good. Oh, you are good. I put off all my heaviness and put on this garment of praise. You've turned my morning into dancing. You've turned my night into day. And I put off all my heaviness.
Jesus, you're the center. And everything revolves around you, Jesus, you. Nothing else matters. Nothing in this world will do. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, you're the center. And everything revolves around you. Jesus, you. Nothing else matters.
assim. multitude <laughs> we're just joining in eternal worship I don't want to call it a service <laughs> a life of worship that is existing in heaven we're just joining with what's already happening this is a small fraction of what we get to experience for all of our days because of his worth because of his worth because of his worth I want you to pray over your neighbor right now that they would have a heart to see, eyes to see the worth of the Lamb of God right now. Just the worth of the Lamb of God. The worth, the worth of worthy is the Lamb who was slain, who takes away the sin of the world. Behold the Lamb. Lord, we pray for eyes to see your worth. Eyes to see your worth. Eyes to see your beauty. Open the eyes of our heart to see your beauty, Jesus. To be captivated by your face, God. To be captivated yet again, Jesus, by your beauty, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. 
Thank you, God. Thank you, God. <laughs> Whatever you're doing in our neighbor, Lord, we bless what you're doing. <laughs> oh, give us eyes to see your beauty, Jesus. Give us eyes to see your beauty, Jesus. We have, we have a special, I wouldn't even call Chris a guest because he's really from this house. But can we thank Chris Kilala tonight? Amazing. And his friend Johnny, he brought a friend Johnny. Say hello to Johnny. But, but Chris, is it okay? Haley had a, a word for you. Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> Again. So keep playing and stretch your hands out. Yeah, if any of the worship team want to just lay hands on Chris real quick. Um, Chris is a, he is a son and a father in this house. And um, you know, when I came to school in 2008, Chris was carrying a, re a real move of God and has been ever since. And Chris, tonight I saw... Um, when I saw this house laying hands on you, I saw the blessing of the house. I saw um, in the, the feeding of the 5,000 as Jesus broke the bread, the multiplication happened. And I see this as the Lord is, He's taking a piece of your life in this season and it's becoming a multiplication. I see this like, and I, I see small amounts becoming a, a movement. And I feel like um, as much as you have seen in this last season, as much as you have experienced, as much as, as God has used uh, your life and propelled you to reveal His glory, there is a fresh move of God coming through your life. There's fresh songs being birthed through your life. And there are sons and daughters that are gonna come from your wake. And I see you raising up these Levites and I see as you bring your lunch to the Lord, as you bring what you have, He's gonna break and multiply your lunch and it's gonna go and it's gonna feed a generation. And I feel like the Lord is just saying like this generation that you've been crying out for you've been writing music for like there is new sounds and new songs for this generation for this fresh move of God and as a house I just felt for um, us as a house to bless you that you aren't just part of one house you're part of many houses you've sown and invested as a son I remember stories of Brian Johnson telling how you would stack chairs you're the greatest servant um, that Brian said he ever saw on a worship team and so God I thank you for Chris Kilala Lord I thank you for his life laid down before you I thank you for his surrender and Lord I thank you for this new season God, I thank you for the springboarding season, the season of acceleration. And Lord, I thank you, God, you're not the God of addition, but you're the God of multiplication. And Lord, I thank you that you aren't just adding to Chris's life, you are multiplying his yes. And Lord, we thank you for his surrender. Lord, we thank you for songs birthed at 3 a.m. We thank you for songs birthed at 3 p.m., God. We thank you for songs birthed out of valleys and mountains, Lord, besides still waters and lying in the green pastures, God. We thank you for this man of God, for his consistency, for his faithfulness for His integrity. And God, we pray, Lord, for a fresh fire. I see a fresh mantle, like something is being placed upon you in this season and it's not gonna be weighty. It's gonna be, there's gonna be an ease and a grace. So we say thank you for that in Jesus' name. And as a family, we love you, Chris, and we are for you. Yeah, amen. you agree, say yes and amen. So be it. Well, turn to the beautiful person next to you. We are packed wall to wall, so we also have an overflow where the Holy Spirit is moving powerfully in the overflow as well. So if you don't have a seat, make your way to the overflow. As you do that, check out our church news. Bethel family, we have got some updates for you. Here's this week's church news. Join us on May 5th for an exclusive showing of our friend Darren Wilson's new film, The God Man. In this film, Darren turns his focus to Jesus, seeking to reveal the one who is real, alive, and active in the world today. Learn more and register at Bethel.com forward slash church news. We want to remind you about our upcoming Foundations of Faith Equip class. This class is specifically for new and renewed believers who are looking to strengthen their foundations. Join Bethel Pastors as we explore together what we believe and why we believe it. You can learn more at Bethel.com forward slash equip. We are so excited for this next announcement because Bethel Reading Weekend is coming June 2nd through the 4th. This is gonna be a time where our local church community gathers to catch vision, be inspired, and stir our hearts for one another and for our city. 
More details are headed your way, so keep an eye out at Bethel.com forward slash church news. The Transformation Center and Healing Rooms are two ministries in our environment that are both going after the full healing, transformation, and wholeness that Jesus died for. They are amazing resources that are available to all. Hear more from Donna De Silva, the director of the Transformation Center and the founder of Sozo Inner Healing, and Chuck Parry, the director of Bethel Healing Rooms. So Chuck, you know, but did you know that when Jesus died and rose from the dead, he did so so you could experience freedom from physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual constraints? Well, the Transformation Center and the Bethel Healing Rooms are here to help you in your freedom journey. We offer sozos, but also we offer pastoral and licensed counselors, coaching, and even an addiction program. The Transformation Center has been working for nearly 30 years. Can you believe it? It's been that long. And we've been helping people experience breakthrough in healing healing and godly connections. Uh, Isn't that something? Yeah, we would love to help walk you through your healing journey. We are open Mondays through Saturdays and offer in-person and virtual sessions. So visit us at our website, tcbethel.com to get started. And I want to tell you about Bethel Healing Rooms, a place where we pursue the Holy Spirit and His healing power in a special time of ministry. It's a place we see God bring life, wholeness and love to those who are suffering, specifically from physical ailments. We believe that one prayer can change everything for you. We're a family of joy-filled believers who see God bring complete restoration and healing every week to individuals who visit us for prayer. Come and register every Saturday from 8.30 to 10.30 a.m. We'd love to have you join us in person or online. And local church family, our Bethel Healing School is coming up May 9th through 12th, and this is a time for you to be activated in healing and miracles, so come join us. We are so excited about all of the healing breakthroughs we're seeing, and we'd love to have you come be part of it. So if you still have any questions regarding Bethel's Healing Rooms or the Transformation Center, come chat with us after service, because we're gonna actually be in the lobby. So you can get information there, or you can learn more on our website, Bethel.com. Remember that your healing is one prayer away. I just love that we as a church body are going after complete healing, body, soul, and spirit, just like Jesus modeled. What a way to wrap up this week's church news. If you missed any of these announcements, go to Bethel.com forward slash church news to learn more. Have an amazing week. See you guys. Woo, okay. Yeah, we can give a hand for that church news. They did such a good job. That's wonderful. Just one more time, if you have one seat next to you or two, you just put your hands up. We got a couple seats in the room. If you're in the back, or, uh, yeah, we probably got about 10 seats available in this room, 11, 12 maybe. So if you're looking, just put your hands up, just hold them up for just one more second. Let's see if you need any seats, visitors, anyone in the back. It's like an auction. We got one in the back, one in the back. I see two in the back, I see two in the back, I see three in the back. No. <laughs> Soul to the man in the blue. No, okay, you can put your hands down. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, it is so wonderful to be with you all. Welcome online church. For those of you that are joining us uh, from all over the world, we welcome you. It's so good to have you. If you are a first time guest, which I feel like we have a lot tonight, which is so exciting. If you're a first time guest to Bethel Church, would you please stand up? We won't embarrass you, but we do wanna celebrate. Would you stand up for us? Stay standing, stay standing for me. Listen, Bethel Church, we know, no, no, stand up, stand up. No, 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 listen, you guys have come far and wide to be here today. And we believe that God wants to do more than you could dream, think, or imagine for you and for your life. So if you are around these people, firstly, please welcome them, say hello to them, smile at them, uh, make them feel like they are so wonderful that they are here. And then would you lay your hands on them right now? Just extend your hands out towards them. Just find out where they're from. What brings them here? Yes. Okay, Bethel Church, lay your hands on them and I just want you to pray over them right now. I want you to bless them. If you have a word for them, speak it over them. You've got two minutes to do that.
Yeah, God, so we thank you for these guests, Lord. We thank you that they've come from all over the world. Lord, we thank you for the sacrifice that they have made to be in this room. God, I thank you that we could never out-sacrifice you. And God, I thank you that you are here to bless them. You're here to pour your love out on them. Lord, I thank you for a spirit of breakthrough to rest on each of our guests. God, would you fill them with your mighty power and your great love and would you cover them and may they experience you. Let them have encounters, God, with your presence. Let them have encounters with your fire. Let them have encounters with your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yeah, you can hug the guests. We're gonna have you stay standing. A couple of us might have a word, a prophetic word for you. So stay standing for a second. Why not? Amazing, amazing. Well, we love to step out in the prophetic and I've just, this is a wonderful couple. You're standing over here. You have the white hat on, blue shirt. I think are you guys a couple. Is that right? Yes. Where, where have you come from? Oregon, okay, I call that local. I just saw the Lord giving you a reward for the last few months. And it's gonna look financial, but it's attached to the spiritual. And I saw the Lord just saying, He's seen you the last two years, you've been digging really deep in the soil. And I felt like the Lord said, you're gonna to begin to reap these foundations that you've been digging. You almost had to remove what was there before. You almost had to remove the old foundations and replace them with the new. And I feel like this time that you're here, I don't know how long you're here for visiting, is significant to both of you, but there's something to do with a family legacy that's almost been held up in heaven with interest. And I feel the Lord saying, there's something you've been praying for specifically over your family and you felt like it wouldn't move. And I feel the Father, I can just feel His love all around you and He's saying, I've withheld it with interest, but wait, when it comes, you'll feel that with the interest attached. And it's an interest like a heavenly that will never run dry, that will never end, that's eternal, that will never run out, that's gonna go for generations to generations to generations because He's a Father of generations and He's the Father of your bloodline and He's on your bloodline, He's for your bloodline and He's over your bloodline. So if you're around, can you just stick your hands to them? Thank you, Father, that you restore the generations. And when He does it, He also does it backwards. He restores forwards, but He redeems what's been stolen backwards. So I pray even over any parents, aunties, uncles, grandparents that are still living, that this inheritance would also fall upon them. And I ask God that it would go forward a thousand generations, Father Lord, that this specific gift that You know, God, that's between You and them, God, that it would fall in the season, God. We pray over family, we pray over children, grandchildren, God, and I pray over every family in this bloodline, this redemption in Jesus' Name. Amen. Visitors, stay standing. I just feel to let you know, we're gonna keep prophesying, but uh, we in this house, we believe in the uh, 1 Corinthians 14 model of prophecy, the, a new covenant prophecy, which is to build up, edify the body. So uh, I, if some of you are not familiar with kind of our teaching around the prophetic, no one's gonna call out anything embarrassing or difficult. We believe the prophetic and now that Jesus has come and restored us and set us a right standing with the Father, we get to prophesy encouragement and building up for the sake of the church to be built up and strong. Amen? Amen. Okay, so we're gonna continue. I just didn't want if any of you were nervous. You don't have to be nervous. You can take a deep breath. There's an amazing couple, uh, you're wearing a green, I can't see from here, but shirt, and I think it's your husband on the left with the pinstripes. Yes. And is the lady on your right next to you? Is she with you too? Okay. I'm gonna stand up here so I can see you. Um, I felt just this uh, openness in the, in the heavens around uh, specifically this couple and I saw uh, the Lord so moved by your humility. And I see uh, God uh, about to, um, in this next season, I see a green light flashing, which is why you're in green. And I feel like there's a decision, make a decision that you're currently in. And I feel like there's a green light for a yes, to say yes. And so um, I also saw what will be married with this season is a openness for prophetic grace to land upon you. And God's gonna use you, um, use your mouths as uh, directional 
voices of affirmation to your community. God's going to op- begin to open up your spiritual eyes. And it's just, He is so uh, moved by your humility. And I see this word of you that you're trustworthy, you're trustworthy, you're trustworthy, you're trustworthy. You've made decisions and decisions and decisions to say yes to the Lord in secret. And in this decision moment, I feel God saying yes. So we just bless uh, this decision season that you're in right now. Lord, we release the abundance of heaven for their, and the grace of heaven for them to move into what you're calling them to. Lord, I just ask even right now for the confidence to agree with prophetic words spoken over their history, that there's even been an attack over your hearing the word of the Lord. And I just say no more in Jesus' name. We bless uh, this woman. You're meant to be a matriarch in your community. There's uh, been a prophetic call on you since you were a little girl. And I just see doubt removing from your heart right now in Jesus' name. God, we say this is a prophetess a woman who is meant to speak into the natural realm and see heaven come. Lord, we ask even for prophetic grace to call things that are not and to have them as they are, Lord, in heaven. Just, I see a key over you. The Lord says that you are a woman who's meant to bind what has been bound in heaven and loose on earth what is to be loosed, what has been loosed in heaven. So we just bless you in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. These four guys right here in the third row, um, I just, you see it saying, yeah, yeah. I just see the, the spotlight of the Lord on you. This is a season of innovation for you. I see that you are creatives. You have really innovative minds. I see strategic minds. I feel like um, even in, in, in tech, Bob was just saying, I see tech on them, but I see create, creativity and innovation. And I see um, the Lord is highlighting you and spotlighting you. There are ideas and things that are percolating inside of you. There's a real synergistic relationship Um, It's a God connection here and the Lord is connecting you for a reason and a purpose. And I feel like it is to propel forward the agenda of the Lord in this generation. And I feel like there's gonna be ideas that are gonna spring forth. I feel like there's gonna be risk involved, but I feel like it's, you're not to worry about failing. I, I feel like the Lord says, sometimes you have to get a little wrong to get it righter. Um, and there's this like, there's this um, exploration in the heart and the mind of God that you are diving into in this season. And it's to reveal, I, I feel like First Samuel 2, I think it's 35, where the Lord says, and I will raise up one who will do what is in my heart and in my soul. And um, this was a response to a season in Judges where the people did whatever they saw fit because they had no leader. And I feel like the Lord is calling you Samuels. He's raising up men, these four men who will do what is in his heart and in his soul. And I feel like there's multifaceted gifting in each of you. There's diversity and difference, but it's for a, um, a accumulative purpose. One purpose coming together. And um, so I, I just bless the creativity. I don't know if you have any um, impact in even f- the film industry, but I see um, creativity creativity around uh, uh, what you build and broadcast. So I don't know if that's gonna be through uh, technology or film, but I see something through screens being built and broadcast to bring shift to this generation, to this season. Amen, I hope that makes sense. Yeah, wonderful. Um, Just real quick, before we have the visitors sit down, um, how many of you are family or parents or friends of graduates, BSM graduates in this room? That's amazing. I just wanted to speak this over you. Um, When I had a powerful life-changing encounter three years ago, my mom arrived two days into this life-changing moment and the Lord powerfully touched my mother uh, in this time when the Lord was touching me. I just had another student come up to me. She had a powerful encounter, called her mother and her mother started encountering the Holy Spirit while on the phone for the first time, I had another student reach out to me where her, um, a few months ago, her mom came to church. Her mother ended up getting saved coming to church. I feel like you have, you have released your children, your family members to this amazing opportunity of coming to school and the Lord is about to get you. You're about to get touched by the Lord. You're about to get met. You're about to receive breakthrough. Um, I feel like just get ready. Get set, because God is about to say go. So we bless you in Jesus' name. Thanks for the sacrifice. Uh, We love to have you. You can be seated. Okay, beautiful. Wow, you know, as we were in worship, the Lord said, you know, today is the last 
day of April. And April is known as Resurrection Month, right? We celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. And I literally saw the feet of Jesus just stepping out in the room. And I felt like tonight is a clear night of breakthrough. There's things that people have been hoping for and they were dead, buried in the grave. You're like, ah, oh, it's not happening. And all around, I just see this alignment. When you look around this room, how many of you are wearing stripes? Just raise your hand. I see stripes everywhere. And I see the Lord saying, Leslie's got striped pants on. It's everywhere. There's this divine alignment. And the Lord says, even though it's the last day of the month, it is not too late for him. There is nothing impossible for our king. Things that have been buried, that have been underground, that you're like dead and done, no. Tonight is the night. I just want you to lift up your hands and let it spring forth. There's people that you've been praying for. There's financial things that have been stolen. And God is in the room tonight to resurrect those things in our lives and bring His divine alignment. So, wow, He's just walking through the room. What a night. I just bless each one. You could just feel His presence just surging through the house. Yep. Amen. Amen. It's time to get our hopes up. Can we thank these guys for their prophetic words? Thanks so much for serving. Well, it is offering time. I mean, I, I'm like, get our hopes up. Let's get our hopes up around our finances. Oh, Tom, is that your word tonight? Get our hopes up, hallelujah. Um, I can feel hope is in the room today. Breakthrough is in the room today. And um, I didn't grow up necessarily with an aware of the abundance of the kingdom. I learned to steward and to budget. I had a mathematician for a father who was a fantastic budgeter. Um, but a, a, a few months ago, the Lord started speaking to my husband and I about understanding his generosity. And um, sometimes understanding his generosity, we think it means we're about to receive, but actually he wanted us to understand his generosity by radically giving. And um, I always was kind of nervous that the Lord would do that to me because I, I like to budget, right? And um, in this season of giving, I have never found more joy in giving large things to people in my whole life. And I began to realize it felt like I was giving away God's stuff. It was the craziest feeling of like, um, instead of giving away my finances or my things, it felt like I was giving away God's things. And this awareness, as I began to give according with what the Lord had been calling me to give, it was like it started this like, awareness of like everything I have is God's and that means anything I need he can give me and that means I lack nothing so I can continue to give when he calls me to because he is going to continue to pour into my life and I feel that right now I feel like maybe where you know we've uh, fear has been created over finances or um, with the economy that we're going to lack I feel like in this season the Lord is responding to his church and saying that we can be generous because he is generous and that everything we have is because He has given it to us. And I feel like the Lord is wanting to open us up to recognizing what it means to plant seed. It's pointless to eat seed. <laughs> you wanna plant seed and you wanna eat bread. And tonight we're gonna be able to sow into the kingdom and we're not gonna sow our bread, we're gonna sow the seed God has given us. Because when we sow seed, it yields a harvest. So um, right now, just where you are, why don't you just close your eyes? And ask the Lord what seed you have today. Thanks. Some of you, it might not even be money. Maybe he's asking for a fresh surrender of something, of a promise, of a dream that will be financial breakthrough. What seed do you have today? Thanks. And I'm gonna ask you to stand and we're gonna pray, okay? Hmm. Why don't you just take out whatever gift, maybe you're gonna give by mobile phone, maybe you have cash on you. 
Maybe you're giving from your heart today. Maybe you have a check. Leslie has checks still. I've never written a check in years, but Americans love checks. South Africans haven't written checks ever. <laughs> like, um, but why don't you just uh, either grab your gift or put your hand on your heart right now? I believe the Lord is wanting to awaken us to the abundance of His heart and His kingdom. Revelation 4 says the door to heaven is open. <laughs> it is wide open. And it says that He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. So God, right now we thank You for the abundance of heaven. God, we thank You for a church that walks in the abundance of the kingdom. God, we thank You for a church that not just has bread to eat, but has seed to sow. And God, I pray that whatever is given today, whatever is surrendered today, whatever is invested today, Lord, I thank You that anything invested in faith will produce a harvest. And so Lord, we, we, we come before You today knowing that You are the one that supplies all our needs. You are the one that gives us everything we have. And so Lord, as we give, we open ourselves to receive, Lord. As we sow in, we open ourselves to know You. Jesus, we bless You with our finances. We honour You, we glorify You today. In Your Name we pray, Amen. Just wanna remind you, your tithe belongs in your home church, but you are free to give an offering above and beyond that if you would like to. The worship team's gonna play a song. We have these delightful black buckets. You can just run up to the front and put your investment in. And as you do, just saying, I'm sowing a seed of faith today. Amen. Amen. Thank you, worship team. That was really good. Come on. How many guys love these guys right here? Give them a big hand. So good. Go ahead and grab your seats if you can, if you feel like it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I really feel like God, this is, this, this is so funny. God wants to touch people tonight, obviously. Hey, the Lord's here. He wants to touch people tonight. I don't know if you've heard that. How many guys, it's your first time here at Bethel tonight? That's amazing. Gosh, it's crazy. You heard the stories and you came. That's awesome. You didn't run the other direction. Good for you. You made it through the wall. Just kidding. I remember one, one of my first times here at Bethel back in 2000, I think seven or so. Uh, I was in another campus and we came here for a fire, a fire tunnel. And I was standing right over there. We're probably going to do a fire tunnel tonight, by the way. It feels, it feels like a fire tunnel night. Don't be afraid. It's like, a, it's like a fast, efficient way of praying for everyone. Okay? You just, you know, people line up, you walk through, and we just... But I was going through a fire tunnel. I was standing over there. And, you know, I, I'm just standing there. 
walking through and I'm expecting God to touch me. And I'm standing there with my sister-in-law and all of a sudden I felt this invisible blast, like physically hit me. And I went, whoa! And I'm like, you know, when you watch other people go, whoa! She's like, that's just weird. <laughs> Till it's you going, hi -ya! karate move, you know, whatever. <laughs> because God just touched you. And, uh, you know, the Lord's here. He's, he's really wanting to touch people tonight. I feel like he's eager to touch people tonight. Just pour out his spirit in, in powerful, powerful ways. Ah, I just have so much of my spirit. I just want to go, blah. Oh, so fun. You know, um, I just want to do one thing real fast so I don't forget. How many guys have teenagers in the room or online? Let me see your hands. You got teenagers at home. Listen, we have a youth camp coming up, Young Saints Youth Camp, June 23rd to the 26th is our junior high camp. And then June 26th to the 30th is a high school camp, two separate camps. And it is going to be amazing. Our youth camps, kids will encounter God. They get away from their cell phones. Somebody, come on, praise. That's revival right there. And, and then they have fun together and make new friendships around the fire of God. Like I've been reaching teenagers for over 20 years and I'm telling you, youth camp's the best way. Get your kids to camp. Don't even pray about it. It's the will of God. Just do it, okay? <laughs> Change your vacation around. This is what you're doing. Just kidding. Uh, if, you're, if you're like, finances are, are just a problem. I understand, I understand. But God's, God's gonna provide. And if finances are a challenge for you, the Young Saints team, they have options for you. There are people that want to pay money to get your kids to camp and scholarship them, okay? So go to youngsaints.com for all the information. You can email us also at youth at Bethel.com and they will help you out. So get your kids to camp, amen? We just got back this last weekend. We went to Oroville, California. And uh, man, we had, we had an amazing time. How many guys here, you went to Oroville with us? Raise your hands. It was, it was just incredible. I'm still tired, <laughs> but my heart's overflowing. No, it was, it, was, um, it was an amazing time. I started a ministry here a couple years ago. I can't even remember, one and a half, two years ago, called One Hope for America. I was at my house, and I was looking at Instagram and seeing just bad news, <laughs> corruption, stuff, and I was discouraged, honestly, and I said, God, what are we going to do to see America saved? I genuinely prayed, and I kind of laid down just laying there, falling asleep, and these words hit me in the face, one hope for America. And I sat up, I felt the presence of God. Long story short, we started this ministry. This was our, our second big event. And um, oh my gosh, it was so radical. Um, first of all, the miracle that happened was 22 churches came together in unity. That's amazing. Uh, one of the main pastors there in Orville, Scott Thompson, a friend of mine, he's a BLN pastor, Bethel Leaders Network. We have a, a leaders network that you can, you can join. And he's just a pit bull who just went after his town. He is an amazing man. And him and a bunch of the pastors there just came together around the cross, just around Jesus, around his presence. Every, I mean, all these churches laying down denominational and political differences to come and gather around the cross of Christ and see Jesus lifted up. It was a miracle. And I'm telling you, what happened in Orville is prophesying right now to Yuba City. It's prophesying to Chico. It's prophesying to Paradise, to Red Bluff, to Sacramento, to the different places all over California. Because I believe God wants to breathe across this land. He's breathing across this land. Listen, over 200 people got saved in three days. It was amazing, come on. <laughs> Miracles, I had signs and wonders, people getting healed. One woman had a, uh, I'm driving down the road and all of a sudden I had a sharp pain in my left wrist. My wrist never hurts. At first I was like, dang, and then it hurt again. I was like, okay, God, I'm listening to you. I'll, I'll release the word tonight. So I released it and there was a woman there who had a knot inside of her wrist from hurting it or breaking and it healed wrong. She got prayer and it instantly dissolved. She's freaking out on stage. It was awesome. A lot of backs healed. So many miracles. One of our, one of our, our video guys, this is what I love about revival. Everybody's just dangerous. Our video guy, he's walking around. And, uh, and somebody, he begins to pray for somebody's pinky. 
and his face, this guy was rough, right? And, and, and his face had big wounds all over it. And as he began to pray for him, he's there looking at his pinky, testing it out. All of a sudden he looks up at his face and the wounds disappeared off of his face. <laughs> A lot of guys with ankle bracelets on, getting born again, you know. I'm not talking about, you know, jewelry from Jared's. I'm talking about jewelry from the state of California so they can be watched after. And the last night we had, uh, we baptized close to 30 guys, 30 people. One of them called his parole officer, one or at least I know of, called his parole officer and said, hey, I want, I'm at this thing, I want to get baptized, but can I, so can I stay out late? And the parole officer said, yeah, go for it. Get the guy gets baptized. Come on. I, I feel this anticipation in my spirit. There are a lot of people who have spoken things over California like it's about to fall into the ocean. And, and I know there's, there's a lot of demonic craziness in this state. I'm not going to deny that fact. But God is greater and God is bigger. I believe... I believe we're on the brink of the greatest revival that's about to sweep America right now. Reinhard Bonnke said, when I see a closed door, I look for a crack. And then he goes through the crack. So tonight I'm telling you right now, there's a crack open that's way bigger than a, than a little crack in California right now. I'm telling you, people are hungry for God. They're hungry for God. Don't let anybody lie to you and tell you it's just hard ground here. We're in Orville walking around and people were just hungry. They were like, hey, you want to talk about Jesus? They're like, sure. One girl's on my Instagram page. She walks up to a kid, starts talking to him about Jesus and how God had impacted her life. And he said, well, I want that. So he just prays and gives his life to Jesus. It was just easy. It's just easy. <laughs> we're at a restaurant. We're sitting there and and uh, I'm kind of mean. I like to empower people and just throw them into the ocean. Just kidding. But our worship leaders were sitting there with us. And, uh, and I did this to him one time before. I looked at the waitress. She's 18 years old. I said, come here. She comes walking over to us. And I said to her, I said, have you ever wondered how God feels about you? And she said, I've never thought about that. I said, would you like to know? She said, sure. And I pointed at the worship leader and I said, she's going to tell you. <laughs> it wasn't Hannah. It was somebody else. And she walks over to poor Kennedy. And Kennedy, I mean, she's the sweetest Texas tea, right? I mean, she just begins to just love on this, this girl. And, and this girl was drinking it up. She was just like, wow, God really likes me? You know, she's just, all of a sudden they get up and they walk away. We're like, this looks like a good sign. We're just sitting there eating our food. And uh, she walks, I don't know, 15 feet away, and then, and then they move from this to this. And, and she's praying for her. And then I stand up a minute after they were talking, I walk over there, and I was like, what's going on? She's like, she just gave her life to Jesus. <laughs> it's really not hard when somebody, it's, you know, when we're telling people about Jesus, it's, I'm not opposed to that, but... When you show somebody Jesus, man, he's, why wouldn't you want him? You know, the girl was like, I just feel empty sometimes. I know my dad believes, but I don't know. And she said, well, Jesus just wants to fill that space. Would you like to invite him to just fill that space? She says, yeah. So she just praised and received Christ. This is not hard. Look at your neighbor and say, it's easy. It's, easy. it's too easy. <laughs> now, here's the deal. We're in a fire-breathing, Holy Ghost-filled place, and if you're not one of those and you're here, <laughs> you know, it's, it's easy to stand up here and prophesy revival is coming, but somebody's got to go carry the revival. When my wife and I started over 20 years ago, we were in Texas, praise God. And uh, we started a ministry called Salt and Light. 
That's right, baby. We went and took pictures of the ghetto, made a slideshow, showed it to our Pentecostal spirit-filled church that was given nearly a million dollars to missions. Right? It was nearly a million bucks to missions every year. These guys were just, we're like reaching the nations. And so we're, me and I stand up and I, I said, my wife and I, God's called us to go and reach people for Christ. And everybody's like, yeah. And I said, we're gonna go. So this Saturday at nine o'clock, we're gonna meet here. We're gonna pray together. And then we're gonna go to that neighborhood and knock on doors. And we're gonna talk to people about Jesus. So we're gonna invite you to come. Everybody's like, yeah. Like, Sweet. A thousand people, like the on fire church of the city. So we're like, yes. So I'm like, you know, I'm anticipating how many people are going to show up this Saturday, right? It's like, so we we're getting ready. We we go to the, we go there and we're, we're we're ready and we walk into the church, and it's me, my wife, and one guy. <laughs> His name was Aaron McDowell. Thanks for Aaron. Yes. I'm standing there and I had a choice to make. Do I go because, because God called me or, or do I wait to be successful looking? Do I wait for convenience and more opportunity and somebody to give me a microphone? So I, I decided we're just gonna go. I'm not called, I'm called to pick up my cross and just go. So we, we're like, we prayed, we're excited. We, we went for it, we go out there, it starts raining cats and dogs in Texas, you know? <laughs> Buckets, horses falling out of the sky. <laughs> and my friend Aaron gets sick and throws up. I mean, the day was just like a bust. In the natural, everything went wrong. I don't know why I'm telling you guys a story. This was not my plan. So we went the next week and the next week and the next week. And you know what? We just decided to just never stop. We just kept going, kept going. Then all of a sudden people started going with us. And then we got ideas as we went. We adopted a neighborhood and started reaching kids there. And then, and then I had the idea, what if we started a sidewalk Sunday school? And I bought a, we bought a, uh, I went to the pastor, he said, sure. And so we bought a, a trailer, the side folds down into a stage. And then I found like this this little plot of land, and I thought, somebody owns that. Better to ask for forgiveness than permission. So we mowed it down, and I put a church there. <laughs> Every Tuesday, we'd rock up into this place, and uh, we started something called Spring Hill Kids Club. And I got some people together, and we passed out 200 flyers or so right around that neighborhood. And that first one, all of a sudden, so I'm like, here it goes. Is anybody going to come? And all of a sudden, a bunch of little kids came, and we began to preach the gospel, and they all began to get saved. Every week, we'd go. People began to get saved. We began to get born again. And revival came to this place, but revival would not have come to that place unless we went. Somebody's got to go. Somebody's got to go. I don't know if you heard that lately. Somebody has got to. So we went for it. We have a kid right now in our school ministry who is from that neighborhood. He was a little bit young, but I met him about fell over the other day because I was like, you gotta be kidding me. You have no idea what God will do with your yes. No idea, no idea. Time Magazine heard about us somehow and interviewed me. I still don't know to this day how, but they put me in Time Magazine for this thing. It's just like, what if I'd have just decided, you know, we'll just get a better strategy later, just kind of dumb, I don't know, and just didn't go. I mean like, Somebody's got to go for it. Praise God. All right, listen. So somebody's got to go. Listen, it's time to go to your neighborhood. It's time, to go to your, it's, it's time to go to your workplace. It's time to go to your family. Time to go to your friends. I'm telling you, America is on the brink of a great revival. It's time to lock in and not get distracted, but it's time to go. Amen? It's time to go for it. If you want revival in America, put your hand on your heart. And say, Jesus, start with me. Send me. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Praise God. Hmm. My message is simple. Jesus Christ and him crucified with a demonstration of the Spirit's power so your faith doesn't rest on men's wisdom but on the power of God. We saw Satanists get delivered 
kid coming up, she's wrapped up in Satanism. One guy made a covenant with 75 demons and got set free. It's too easy. Amen? Hey, I want to do something right now. If you're in this room and you're battling fear, um, if you're battling, if you just feel like in your head you're wrapped up in fear, you can't get out of it, you feel like it's a web, you feel like, you know, um, you feel like you're just kind of stuck in this spot of anxiety and you just can't break out, you feel like God's not there to help you, God wants to break that out of you right now. I've, I've been in that place before and I want to just be vulnerable to say that I've had people grab that thing and just rip it off of my head and help me get out of it and God's going to do it for you because he's faithful. Amen? He's good. He's a God of grace and mercy. So if that's you right now, I want you to just, just stand up. We're going to pray for you. Thank you, God. All right, go ahead and just put your hand on them right there. Thank you, God. Listen, God has not given you a spirit of fear. That, that spirit that's got you wrapped up in your head right now is not who you are. It's not who you are. So right now, we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to repent, we're going to renounce, and then we're going to receive grace. So right now, just say, God, I'm, I'm sorry for, for meditating on this, for focusing on this, for asphyxiating on this thing right now. And, and just turn right now. And just right now, just receive grace right now in Jesus' name. Just receive grace. I pull off this mental torment. I pull off this assignment that the enemy's had against you. It's not because you've done something wrong, it's because you've done something right. You're about to step into a breakthrough. You're about to step into a place of freedom. You're about to step into a, a next level of your destiny that's gonna unlock different realms, different things you've been crying out to God for. Right now, I just release freedom over you. Freedom and grace, hope to your heart, hope to your mind. I just release right now grace to pull off mental torment. Mental torment, get off in Jesus' name. Get off. It's not who you are. Right now, I feel like you're supposed to take your authority. Listen, the devil does not have authority to torment you. He has power. You're the one with authority, and he uses lies to steal your authority and uses power against you. So right now, I want you to take your authority Put your hand on your own head right now, on your own belly. And this is part of your freedom, to not just get free, but also to stay free and walk in freedom. Say, say these words. Say, thoughts line up with the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. I almost feel, I just, I just, I just sense right now, like, some of you guys, you know, it's almost like you feel like a wasp in the spirit comes around your heads. Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. It's a, it is a wasp that comes around your head. It's like a bee. Zzz, it just comes around your head in the spirit. It's actually, that's a demon. It's a demon. It's not who you are. You have authority to swat that thing. Do not fear fear. Do not fear that spirit. Do not fear that voice. Fear is what attracts the demons. It's what attracts the, 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 the stuff. So right now, just swat it down. Just, I am not saved. My heart shall not fear. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men come against me to eat of my flesh, they, my, they, my enemies shall stumble and fall. My, though, an, though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. So right now, just say, my heart shall not fear. Swat it down. Don't be afraid. I found that in those times of mental torment that I've gone through, fear of another attack is what brings on more attack in my life. So just say, I'm not going to be afraid of you. <laughs> Listen, Bernhard Bonnke put it like this, I am not afraid of the devil, the devil is afraid of me. It's time to start making that kind of a declaration. <laughs> Honestly, that's really the truth. <sighs> so I just release you right now. And I just release the love of the Father over you right now. The love of the Father. He is for you. He is not against you. I just release intimacy with the Father, closeness with God. He's not, a, he's actually, you've, it's not like you've done a bunch of wrong stuff to be where you're at. I really feel like you're, you're in training for reigning. 
Why do I keep hitting this thing again? It's because God's training you to reign at the next level. The devil's not big. Quit. We just flush that bad theology that he's, he's bigger than I am and he's bigger than God and he's not big. He's defeated. He's just really small. Thank you, God. Whoo. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Bless you guys. Go ahead and sit down. Thank you, God. You know, when hardships come, we, we manifest the world that we are the most connected to. When tough times come our way, the world that we will manifest is the one that we are the most connected to in our personal lives on, a day, on, a, on the daily. See, Jesus... Whenever he faced tough times, he always manifested his father's kingdom. All of us are in a spot where we, we have good days and sometimes we, we manifest fear. Sometimes we manifest faith. Fear is faith in the wrong kingdom. It's false evidence appearing real. Sometimes we manifest anxiety. But you know, when you, you know, I love someone you, I preach tonight, you're going to be like, oh, Steve Backlund says that. I make no apologies for it. He's one of my mentors. Praise God. Bill Johnson says that. Yes, it's my inheritance. I'm a son of his. So. I'm. <laughs> I can't even remember what I was going to say now. It was something really good. One of, his, one of his quotes, and I thought, they're going to know it was Steve. So I'm just going to make a preface right now. Go with me in your Bibles to Mark chapter 5. I'm gonna preach a message tonight called it's, it's Time to Get Your Hopes Up. I have, uh, this is from my life journey from the last 10 years. I'll never forget the, the very first time I'm sitting here at Bethel and Bill Johnson stands up here and he goes, any thought that's not glistening with hope is under the influence of a lie. And I'm his youth pastor and I'm standing here going, dang it. That means I'm believing lies. And so I went on this journey of, of renewing my mind. See, before coming to Bethel and before getting around Bill, I didn't really know what hope was. I thought it was more like wishful thinking, like, hope you have a good game. <laughs> you know, you get married and the old, tight, the old guy walks up to you and says, hope you have a good marriage. You know, it's just, <laughs> it's not really like a declaration of faith. He's like, hope, it's good. I mean, that, none of that, it's, it's wishful thinking, it's not real hope. Hope is the inheritance of a child of God. Until I really understood the science behind hope, I didn't know how to have hope in my life. I had to figure out that there was, there was actually the renewal of my mind I have to walk through to grab a hold of truth and, and impart some beliefs inside of me. Steve says I had great, belief, great doctrine, but bad beliefs, that was me. I could tell you 16 fundamental truths of the denomination I used to be a part of. I could tell you all sorts of doctrines and memorized scripture, but I had these beliefs inside of me that were kind of buried, that I was living from, that would manifest the wrong world. When, when a thought came or when a trial came or even a temptation, it would make me feel like I wasn't right. And so I had to go on this journey, and I'm you know, still on this journey. I believe a lot less lies today than I used to. That's for dang sure. Praise God. <laughs> Mark chapter 5, Jesus was uh, still speaking, and then he came from the ruler, verse 35. He came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, Your daughter's dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? As soon as Jesus heard the words that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, don't be afraid, only believe. I really believe Jesus was lighthearted. Don't be afraid, only believe. And he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, he saw a tumult. Ah! And those who wept and wailed loudly, because that's the logical thing to do. When he came in, he said to them, why make this commotion and weep? The child's not dead, but sleeping. See, hope always looks irrational to the hopeless. 
It looks irrational. They ridiculed him. When he put him all outside, he took the father and the mother and the child and those who were with him, and he entered the child where the child was lying, and then he took the child by the hand and he said to her, Talitha Kumi, which is translated, little girl, I say to you, arise. Immediately the girl arose and walked, for she was 12 years old, and they were overcome with great amazement. And then he said, get her some Chick-fil-A. <laughs> 12 nuggets, honey, sweet tea, fries. She was pumped, okay? <laughs> Jesus was never shaken by the hopelessness of the crowd. Now, if you drink the pickle juice of a Pharisee, you will make up a whole bunch of excuses as to why we should be hopeless at certain times. But if I'm gonna follow Jesus, follow Jesus. Everybody say, follow Jesus. That's a great cliche in church until we, you know, somebody's dead and we need to pray together. Jesus only took the people with him that carried the belief anything was possible. Amen? Romans 15, 13 says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The hope you have in your life is directly connected to the beliefs you manifest in certain times. There is no separation between beliefs and hope or beliefs and hopelessness. Your beliefs you carry in a moment is what manifests it. If you believe, if you believe, well, I'm praying for the sovereign hand of God to just move on California one day and praise God, people are just gonna get saved one day and it's gonna be wonderful and, and then we'll have a different something happen in the government, that'd be great, I'd love that, oh, praise God, but I don't know if it's gonna happen. Well, hopefully one day, like the Jesus people, it'll just happen. And you just make up these, all these beliefs that it's not gonna happen through you, it's not gonna happen in your time, then that really is what empowers inactiveness. And I believe the reason why we're sitting back right now not seeing the revival we wanna see happen is because we're satisfied without it. And we're sitting in the spirit of unbelief as we look at America and people perishing. Second Peter 3, 9 says, God is not willing that any would perish, but that all would come to repentance. So the kind of revival I believe God is waiting for us to respond to and the faith that we move in that activates the angels that they can do something with is so radical and so violent in the spirit I'm talking about that releases the kindness of the Lord. No demon in hell could actually stop what God wants to do. There is no lie strong enough to stop the truth. There is no depression strong enough to stop the grace to be released. Nothing is more powerful with God. Anything's possible with Him. Amen. So if the enemy can't stop you because he knows Jesus said you have the authority, then what he's gonna try and do is lie to you to get you to give up your authority so he can actually use it against you. Bill says it, if you believe the lie, you empower the liar. around Oroville, our outreach teams, just talking to people. The outreach teams comes back and they were just like, this is amazing. Everybody wanted to talk to us. It was just encouraging. Other people were like, well, it's just hard ground. You know, I, we youth pastored in Salt Lake City, Utah. <laughs> hard ground here, graveyard for pastors. You guys ever heard that one before? It's a graveyard for pastors. It's just funny, let's just laugh at that. That's just dumb. <laughs> Last time I checked, China's experiencing a massive revival that even the Communist Party can't shut down. Iran's experiencing a massive revival. They can't shut it down either. Come on, in illegal nations where the Bible's not even allowed to go, it's spreading all over the world because they can't stop it. And here we are in the freest country the world has ever known and we say it's hard ground? Be it unto us according to our faith. I don't know about you, but I want to get to the judgment seat of Christ. I don't want to look at Paul who was sawed in half. Peter who was crucified upside down and say, sorry bro, I was facing hard ground. <laughs> Pastor.
pass the bread. We're going to take some communion with Jesus. We got we to get some truth in here. We got to get some truth. Come on. In definition of insanity is believing the same thing over and over again, but expecting different results. No wonder we're beating our head into the ground in hard ground. They're a Satanist. I don't know if they want to come to God, but do they know how, how loved they are? Have you ever gotten a word of knowledge for them? There was, there was a kid at Norville who was... His mom was distraught because this kid, he, he, he came to here, and, you know, she brought him and then he left and then she brought him back the next day and she's distraught, this poor mother crying out for her son to get saved and, and um, I just knew in my, my heart, this kid's getting saved, period. So I walked up to him, looked into his eyes and he looked as dead as can be. I mean, dead, dead. He wasn't like, you know, halfway dead Princess Bride. He was all the way dead, right? <laughs> Mostly dead, mostly dead. So I looked at him and I says, you got a dad in your life? Yeah. You close to him? No. So I just jumped in the middle of the mess and I just began to just speak into his life like a father. You are valuable. You are loved. God cares about you. He's, his grace shines at you. He loves you. And I just began to just speak into his life. This kid was sitting there dead as can be for about 30 seconds, maybe 45 seconds, just looking at me. And I was this close to his face, just telling him how God feels about him. All of a sudden, tears begin to form in the corners of his eye. Tears begin to stream down his face as the love of God was being poured into his heart. And right there, it was easy. It was easy. Look at your neighbor and say, it's easy. As, as I just said, do you wanna receive this love into your heart, Jesus? Yes, he gets born again get saved, and then I sicked a whole bunch of people on them. <laughs> right? Hope is anchored in the goodness of God. Jesus is the revelation of this goodness we're talking about. We have, we put our faith in so many different things that don't even look like Jesus, but any revelation you have of God that can't be found in the person of Jesus has reason to be flushed. <laughs> John 10, 10 says, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come that you might have life and have it to the full. Why can't we dream about massive crusades in America like what Reinhard Bonnke saw in, in Africa? If I, oh, brother, it's not about evangelism, it's about discipleship. People who say that never win anybody to the Lord, I'm convinced. They're not, they were not winning souls. They're discipling people. It's great. I love that. Win souls, then talk to me. You know, I mean, ah, oh, okay. This sermon was not supposed to be about evangelism. It was supposed to be about hope, okay? <laughs> the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. God's come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen? He wants to give us life. Oh, okay, praise God. I'm sorry, honey. I'm trying up here. Ezekiel 37 hand of the Lord came upon Ezekiel, took him to the valley of dry bones of Northern California. And he said, oh Lord, can these bones live? Uh, I don't know, oh Lord God, you know. This is his answer. Again, he said, prophesy to these bones and say to them, Northern California, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones. Surely you shall cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. Las Vegas, I say to you, I'll put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you. Cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live, Washington, D.C., and you shall know that I am the Lord, Virginia. San Diego, so I prophesied and I was, as I commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise and suddenly a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone, Indeed, as I looked, there were sinews in the flesh, and they came upon them, and the skin covered them. They covered them over, but there was no breath in them. So I walked away and thought, well, it must not be the word of the Lord, because it hasn't happened yet. You see, what you're going through is training for reigning. 
The last three years, I walked through a valley of the shadow of death. It was just a valley, though. It wasn't real. And I brought people into my life and said, help me go to war. Because I knew where God was getting me ready to go so that I could go see America saved. Thus says the Lord, prophesied it in his breath. You know the rest of the story. Come four winds, oh breathe on these slain. And whoop, they came up, the army of the Lord stood up. When we're anchored in truth and anchored in the reality of God's goodness, you can prophesy to any situation. What looks impossible becomes easy. See, living for God is not hard, it's impossible. Walking in the spirit is not challenging. It can be complex at times, but it's actually simple. It, and it's supernatural. And so, you know, walking with God, it's just like you, you, you have to get in the spirit. Okay, anyway, I better just get to my notes here so I can keep going. <laughs> Praise God. As leaders, we must first give hope to those around us. Bones are never too dry for a miracle. <laughs> hope is the confident expectation that good is coming. What does hope look like? It means having an expectation good is coming. Steve says hope is general, faith is specific. Hope, faith without hope is weird. We get all like, we gotta see this thing happen. Gotta see that it didn't happen. God's not real. I don't know if his promises are real. Faith is, faith is the specific thing we go after, but hope is the net. Well, it didn't happen that way. That's all right. We're just gonna keep going. Why? Because God's working all things together for my good and for his glory. Because I love him, called according to his purposes. We're just gonna keep moving. Well, hit eject. This marriage is not gonna work. It's not gonna happen. See, why? Because, you know, I have a broke wife. She's just broken. Broke husband. Can't figure it out. Maybe it's being under you according to your faith for so long because you keep believing the worst thing about them and you're just prophesying the wrong thing. Change, your, change the thing you're thinking on. See, the kingdom is opposite and upside down from this world. And the harvest is waiting for us to discover who we are so that they can step into the grace that's being released through your life. Hope in the kingdom of God has nothing to do with the current circumstances but your current beliefs has nothing to do with what you're currently facing. We can get so asphyxiated with a problem we're facing or something going on, or maybe it's with your health, or maybe it's with your, in your spouse, or maybe it's something you're lacking in your, in your home or your finances, and you're just like, this same thing is here, but every battleground we're facing in our lives is actually the training ground to walk in hope in the supernatural. When I begin to change in my life and begin to see Oh, this is not just a situation. This is actually the training ground. And God's not trying to change all those people out there that are making my life hard. He's changing me. How many of you guys ever pray crazy prayers like, Lord, make me like you? He's like, okay. You know how you're waiting for your boss to apologize? Why don't you start first? Amen? Hope is connected to your current beliefs. Beliefs come from truth or the lack thereof in your experiences. So I have a journal. I write down truths in there and I'm constantly renewing my mind, constantly. I'm constantly going to war right here. This is where the war starts, takes place and ends is in the battle of the mind, right? But recognizing what's going on in the atmosphere, Donna's like the master ninja jujitsu person with this. It's just like, dude, if things are coming at you, it's not you. Yeah. How many of you guys ever walk into a room and all of a sudden you feel insecure? Yeah. Or you feel a tempting thought? Or something happens and you're just like, huh, fear is the very thing that validates those things in your life. But instead, when I'm walking with hope-filled life, that's anchored in truth that I am actually a new creation. God's with me. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. No weapon formed against me will prosper and every tongue that rises up in judgment against me, I will condemn. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my lips. My, my boast is in the Lord. 
Oh, magnify the Lord with me, not the problem with me. That one thing right there, <laughs> you wanna live a hope-filled life, stop magnifying the problem and magnify the Lord. But it says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. So instead of getting together your friends and magnifying problems together, magnify the Lord together and you'll watch your problems get really small. You begin to steward hope. Amen? Years ago, I, I actually learned how to walk in faith when we were, ooh, here we go. One of them stories. Sorry, babe. I was 19 years old, I woke up with pain in my back. Woke up and I was like, oh God, this hurts really bad, I couldn't walk. Long story short, it would hurt for a week and then it would go away, and then it would hurt for a week and then it would go away. And I, thought, I just thought I had like a kidney infection. And I'm like, so scared of what's going on in my body. Well then, I went to the uh, Brownsville Revival School of Ministry. Brownsville Revival broke out. I go down there, 1997, and it's this massive revival outpouring. It's blowing my mind. Two, two months into the school, we had a spiritual emphasis week where a missionary came there from Mexico, and he was blowing my faith away, just all sorts of, I mean, he was, he'd seen nearly 300 people raised from the dead, all sorts of crazy stuff. It was David Hogan, and I was like, who is this man? The whole time, I need a miracle. I mean, my back hurts, my body hurts, something's going on, I don't know what's going on. And like, my body is telling me, you're sick. My body is telling me all these symptoms that are shaping my faith. And I had a choice to make as I'm listening to David Hogan. Manifest the kingdom of God as you read about in scripture, but it's not my current experience. My experience was way different from his experience. <laughs> and so I'm standing there, it's a Friday, and uh, he said, if you're sick in your body, you need a miracle, raise your hand. So I did, somebody prayed for me. Physically, I felt nothing, none of my symptoms changed. And I'm standing there, and I had a choice to make. I had a choice to make. Either believe my symptoms, or believe something differently. Next day, I was like, there, there, there was something in my heart that was different than I'd had before. I had a fight in my spirit. I woke up, I looked at my body, and I said, body, line up with the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Stop. Body, line up with the kingdom of God. You know, you're speaking those words, and you feel foolish. You feel insecure. I felt all the feels, right? Y'all know what I'm saying? But, but I just listened to this deposit that had just been imparted to me from David Hogan in this orange sanctuary in Pensacola, Florida, of seeing the most crazy miracles I'd ever heard of in my life. Bones being broken, sticking out of the skin, and then going back into the skin and just healed blood all over, but no wound anymore, right in his hand. I mean, it's just like all sorts of stuff happening. People that have been dead for three days with lime covered all over him, rotten in the ground, he stands over him. Live in Jesus' name, they stand up right there. I mean, it's just like all these stories. And I'm like, it would be irrational and illogical and dumb to not believe God can't heal me. So I'm standing there, body, I don't care what you say, you're a liar. <laughs> Lying spirit, get off of me. My symptoms didn't change. Monday rolls around, same thing. I'm speaking to my body. Tuesday rolls around. I passed a kidney stone I didn't even know I had. I'm speaking to my body and I passed the kidney stone. Now here's what's crazy. This kidney stone was not just, you know, your average little kidney stone. It was the size of a Tic Tac. I went diving, Haley. I got this thing out. I put it in a plastic bag like I just cut Goliath's head off. And I said, look what the Lord has done. Leslie saw it. I put it in my journal and I circled it because I never wanted to forget. 
God healed my body. I learned how hope and faith work in that situation. That when your symptoms are saying one thing, you have a choice to make. Who will you believe? Amen? <laughs> Praise God. It's like, Lord, why couldn't it have been like a different, no, it's a kidney stone story. I share it all over the world. <laughs> Praise God. You know, hopelessness is the disease of the church. Hopelessness is what is holding back a massive harvest from happening. Because if millions of people get saved right now, where are they gonna go? Hopelessness is, is referred to as the thing that makes us heart sick. It's, it's, it's what we, you know, we make the worst decisions when we're hopeless. I mean, like, I went to Siberia with Chris Fallotton. We had so much fun, nine days together, just me and Chris. That's a, a lot of stories in itself right there. But you know, here we are, <laughs> we're flying home and I bought my daughter a big Russian teddy bear and I'm sitting there with it, we're flying into Frankfurt and all of a sudden my stomach just started going blah, 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 blah. and I was like, oh God, no, 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 no. We get to Frankfurt and I went to the bathroom and cast out demons, I mean, it was awful. <laughs> <laughs> exorcism all over you know so then I'm like I gotta fly home like this and Chris is like you alright I'm like I need a miracle man so I'm speaking to my body I'm doing everything I know how to do and it's just not breaking so then he upgrades us to first class and I'm like thank you Chris and so we get up to the front of the plane we're standing there in front of the plane and the plane's going that direction, but we're facing this direction. There's Chris, me, and some poor soul who never acknowledged my presence for 14 hours. <laughs> never even looked this direction. So we're sitting there, and Chris says to the steward, excuse me, do you got any Alka-Seltzer or anything like that? And she's like, sure. She comes back, gets some Alka-Seltzer, and she says, here, drink this. And I'm like, I don't think that's a good idea. He says, no, just trust me, drink it. I'm like, Chris, I don't know that that's a good idea. Trust me, drink it. And I thought to myself, honestly, he's a prophet. Maybe he's right. <laughs> so I start going. I get half of it down, and I stop. We take off. <laughs> flying in the air. He looks at me with a smile on his face, and he's like, you better? And I said, no. <laughs> you don't feel better? I says, no. Have you ever been so sick, you all of a sudden lose all sense of caring? or self-dignity. It's just like, if this was a youth group, I'd tell you all the details, but I will spare you. He's like, you don't feel better? I says, no. Like, you're gonna throw up again? Yep. He begins to look frantically for a bag. We can't find one, so he hands me a pillowcase. <laughs> then he has to hand me another pillowcase. There you the reasons why. Then he has to hand me a plastic bag that he takes the, the blanket out of. He was so bad. Oh. Chris became my nurse. His favorite assignment in life, right? So we're flying, we're getting the air. I am so sick, guys. I go to the, I go to the bathroom, I look myself in the mirror. And I said, God, you can just kill me now. Take me home. I don't want to live anymore. There's a lot of guys in BSSM who would love my wife. She's hot, sure. <laughs> Give my kids a new husband. <laughs> we made it through. I... We landed, Chris was carrying my back, my backpack. I wasn't a real traveler with the, you know. <laughs> had my backpack on his shoulders. We made it home, kissed the ground when we got home. I thought about it later. We say and make the stupidest decisions when we're hopeless. <laughs> Don't make decisions when you're hopeless. When you've lost hope, when you don't feel good anymore, 
When you don't like the circumstance, don't blow up your life. Now I'm really in pain. Yeah, I could, now you really are. And that was a lot worse than he was. We get, we just make bad decisions when we're hopeless. Man, instead of, instead of that, just, just, you gotta, you gotta surround yourself with people who can give you truth and help you get back to your, your, your bearings of believing truth and standing with God, you know? Gosh, I've, I spoke to teenagers for years, worked my brains out for a message, you know, and fast and pray and get there, and they just wanna kill a bag of Doritos in the front row. <laughs> Make out with the girlfriend in the back of the room. I'm just like, God, help me. I'm doing, giving them my best shot. Felt like Scotty in Star Trek. God, I'm, I'm giving up all God, just don't have the power. You know, you just, you just keep swinging, keep slugging. You're in a training ground to go to the next level. You got to grab truth, grab the beliefs. Hope is the overflow of the beliefs that you're anchored in. So get anchored in truth. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Amen. Last thing I want to say is this. The biggest voice of hope will carry the most influence in our cities. It's a common statement we have here around Bethel. People are looking for genuine hope. Americans today are, are, are looking for who will comfort me in my pain. They're looking for what's really the truth, what's going on in the world right now. And somebody who can stand up and give them the biggest voice of hope will have the most influence in their lives. But if we can't face our checkbook with hope, you won't be able to face souls with hope. If you can't face your marriage with hope when it doesn't feel hopeful yet, God's not gonna put you in front of your dreams to see that breakthrough yet. The place you're in right now is training ground for where God wants to take you. Amen? So, Steve's gonna love me for this. Go buy all of Steve Backlund's books. <laughs> buy Donna's books. Get Bill's books. And if you don't like what's going on in here, feast until it's different. It's honestly, <laughs> Psalms 23, five, he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. My cup overflows. Okay, let me, let me just tell you this, all right? You're obviously reading your Bible. Steve takes the word and he packages it for you to help you really fix your brain in flow and hope. Amen? Amen. All right, go ahead and stand. Time to get your hopes up. Like, it's time to get your hopes up. It's not time to despair. It's not time to f be asphyxiated on the past. I know things didn't work out the way they should have or would have or could have, whatever, but, but it's time to get your hopes up because God is for you. He's not against you. Your best is ahead, not behind you. Amen? I know that one thing didn't work out, but it's time to just deal with it with the Lord, get, it, get the word of the Lord, and then move forward because your best is yet to come. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Hey, if you're in this place right now, and you, I, I feel like there's people here who, who you know the Lord, you've been, you've, know, you've been around God, but tonight you feel like you want to rededicate your life to the Lord. There's a spirit in this room of reconciliation to draw you back to him. You've been, you allowed yourself to just get kind of drawn away, and God wants, he's just drawing you back right now to himself. If that's you, just raise your hand. He's just drawing you back to himself. Come on. Just raise your hand right now. Come on. He's gonna break addiction. He's gonna, he's, gonna, he's gonna fill you with hope. He's gonna fill you with his presence again. He's not mad at you. It's just time to hit reset. It's just time to hit reset. Who is that? Come on. Come on. All right, come on up here, man. Come on up here, right over here. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. I feel like the Lord wants to just pour out a spirit. I just saw it, 1038. I've been seeing, me and Angela have been seeing 1038 everywhere. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. And he went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. So maybe if you're in this room and you feel like, you know, in your thoughts, you're just, you just feel like you've been oppressed. God wants to just free you. It's just time to get free from oppression. It's time to get free from oppression. Thank you, God. It's time to get free from oppression. Come on. There's freedom in this room. 
There's freedom in this room. Shoo! Come on, there's freedom. Whoa, that's it. Oppression is lifting off. It's time to break partnership with the spirit of oppression. It's time to break agreement with despair. It's time to break agreement with, the, with, with this hopelessness. Amen. All right. If you're here and you feel like I need to break agreement with hopelessness, raise both hands in the air right now. You're facing a situation. It's time to get your hopes up. It's time to get your hopes up. Can you now see, can you see that the hopelessness you're facing has come from feasting on the wrong news? Can you see that? Amen. He's your healer. He's your deliverer. He's your stronghold. He's your high tower. Praise God. Hope says, faith says, I know how it's gonna happen and I'm believing God for it. I'm expecting it. Hope says, I don't know how it's gonna happen, but I know something good's about to happen. Hope says, I know something good's coming. Faith, come on, faith sees, hope feels, but love never fails and his love is in this room. So right now, just say these words right now. Put your hands in the air. And just say, I repent. I change from feasting on the wrong stuff. Put your hand on your head. Say, I break the power of oppression. The name of Jesus is higher than oppression. Thank you, God. Somebody's been battling suicide for 13 years. God is, he's setting you free right now. He's setting you free. You've created an ecosystem in your own mind to justify the spirit of, of, of depression in your life. And tonight, it ends tonight. God's giving you your life back. It's, he's giving you grace. He's giving you grace. Praise God. Freedom in this room. There's freedom here. There's freedom here. Just take it. It's by grace through faith. Just take it. It's by grace through faith. Thank you, God. Say, I, I break up with these thoughts. I break these thoughts. I'm going to make an agreement. Why is giving your life to Jesus so powerful? He says in, Roman, in John, Romans chapter 10, he says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. And believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead. You'll be saved. Why? You're making a new agreement. And there is no agreement more powerful than that agreement. You're breaking the old agreements of it's never gonna work out, I don't know if it's gonna happen for me. All the different agreements that, that empower dysfunction and, and hopelessness. But when you make an agreement with the living God, Jesus Christ is Lord. What you're actually saying is Jesus is alive, he's with me right here. Everything changes, amen. So right now say hopelessness, hopelessness. you have no place here. Say, Jesus, Jesus. You're, alive you're alive in me. I trust you. I, trust you. I pray right now. Pray right now. Upgrades, Upgrades in my beliefs, in my beliefs. That, you're that you're with me. You're not against me. Not you're, against you. for me. you're for me. Say, other people, other people. are not the problem. Ha ha. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta lay hands on yourself, amen? <laughs> Say these words. Say, joy, joy. is not my spouse's responsibility. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Singleness, come on. I'll be happy when I'm married. <laughs> Let's break that lie. What else? It's about to get saucy in here. Come on. <laughs> Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Say, Christ lives in me. I'm an heir of God. Co-heir with Christ. 
God's Son, my spirit cries out, Abba, Father. Never alone. Always desired. Protected. Loved. Come on. <laughs> Can you see? I'm trying to impart something here. It's a science behind hope. That if you don't like what's going on, you got to feast on something different. And you can't, I can't live, I can't afford to live discouraged. I can't afford to live hopeless. I can't afford to stay there. So if it hits me, if a thought hits me, I can't shake. I'm calling somebody. I'm going to somebody. I'm going there to say, help me get this off of me. Donna, I'm talking about Donna, all right? I'm talking about Donna. I just don't want to make her too busy. Transformation Center. Amen. Put your hand on your heart and just, put your hand on your heart and just begin to just pray in tongues right now. Just pray in the spirit. Because you are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. You're more than a conqueror. You don't know what I'm facing. It doesn't matter. You're more than a conqueror. You're victorious in Christ. He's alive in you. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells on the inside of you. It's time to get unstuck right now. Time to get unstuck. Hey, if you're in this room right now, you feel like you've been stuck in this hopelessness. You've been stuck in, in, in despair and you want to break out. Just jump out of your chair and just come down here as a prophetic act. You're saying, I'm getting unstuck today. Come on, get up here, run. Just go, I'm getting unstuck today. I'm getting unstuck today. Come on. Woo. It's time to get unstuck. Time to get unstuck. Come on. Come on, right here, here it comes, right here. Fire. Fire. Time to get unstuck. Woo, let's go. More. Woo. <laughs> Fire of God. Unstuck. 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 More. Whoa. Unstuck. Woo. Woo. The word is near you. It's in your mouth. Sing, O barren woman. You have no child. Sing out. This is the kingdom. It's in your mouth. You don't feel like it. You got to speak to your body anyways. Speak to your situation. Say this. Say, I'm not a victim. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Come on. Shh. Fire, 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 fire. There's an impartation here that's coming. There's a rewiring of the brain that's happening. Woo. Thank you, God. Woo. It's time to get a new word. God's going to bring a new word and put it in your mouth. You can begin to fight with that prophetic word in the situation you're in. Speak to it. First person God always changes is me. So right now, I just release more. More, God. Whew. Unstuck. Unstuck. <laughs> You're in a river. How could you be stuck? The river of God is flowing from the throne. How could you be stuck? His river is flowing. The river of God is flowing. It's up here right now. You're flowing. You got, you got a river flowing out of you right now. Just, just tell Jesus. Say, Jesus, flow through me, God. Flow through me, God. I want to be unstuck. Whoo. Whoo. Fire. More. More. Hey, just repent. I feel like somebody just needs to repent. I don't know how else to say it. I'm trying to figure out a, a nice way to say it. Just repent. Just repent. 
just turn around. It just it doesn't mean grovel and, you know, all that shame. It just means, okay, I'm done. I'm, I'm not going to do it this way anymore. I'm going to follow you, Jesus. What do you say? Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow you. I refuse. I'm not going to despair anymore. God, I'm not going to have a pity party for myself anymore. Shh. Hey, who needs to repent for self-pity? Feeling bad for yourself. That's a, that's a demon. Let's get rid of that one. All right, let's get rid of that demon. You ready? Say, self-pity. Self you got no place here. Jesus, Jesus. I'm sorry. sorry. Forgive me. Forgive. I repent Forgive. for feeling bad for myself and, and partnering with self-pity. I turn away from it. Thank you. You're always providing for me. Always with me. Ooh. Come on. So good. All right, now open up your hands and just receive grace. Receive grace. Receive grace. By grace, through faith. Paul told his son, Timothy, be strong that is in the grace in Christ Jesus. Be strong in his grace. Be strong in his grace. Not in willpower, not in I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to grind. I'm going to do it myself. No, it's in, it's in grace. What is grace? Grace is unmerited favor. No matter where you're at right now, if you come to him and be honest, you have access to his grace. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God and we have access into this grace by which we now stand. Shoo. So right now, right now, just go to him and say, God, I receive it. It's unmerited favor. God had favor on Noah and empowered him. He found favor with God. God, you have favor with God, not because of anything you've done, but because you're his son, you're his daughter. You understand? It's not a performance. It's not like you finally quit sinning and doing that thing, so now God's gonna favor you. No, you cry out to him. God favors you right where you are, and then he empowers you to, to step into a new way of life. It's called grace. It's called grace. Everything in the kingdom happens by grace through faith. It starts with him. It starts with him. It's by grace through faith. It's by grace. Shame is just being lifted off right now. Shame is being peeled back right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. It's by grace through faith. It's by grace. It's his grace. God's grace. His eyes are on you. His eyes are looking at you right now. His eyes are looking at you right now. Thank you, God, for your grace. Grace of God. It's his grace. It's his eyes are looking towards you right now. It's by grace. By grace. Through faith. In Jesus' name. Thank you, God. All to Jesus. I surrender all to Thee, I freely give. I will love and sing, sing it out. I surrender all. I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. In Christ alone, my place, my trust, He is my strength, my, my song. My cornerstone, my solid ground. I thought I knew it. <laughs> what heights of love, what depths of peace, where fears are still and striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in of Christ I stand. Oh, 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 oh. 
Sorry, that's the version I know. <laughs> In Christ alone, we're going to sing this. Who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid. Here in the death of Christ I live. It's in Christ. You found a righteousness, not of you, not by doing enough, but it's in Christ. It's not from you, it's, it's from him. It's a gift of righteousness. It's a gift of grace. It's his abundance of grace. Who is a river that's aimed right at you? Put your hands up and just say, I receive your river. I receive your grace. I receive hope. Ooh. Say, heart, you're anchored in truth that releases hope. God is always good, loving towards you. There in the ground, his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, sin's curse has lost its grip on me. For I am his, and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. Sing it out. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I'll stand. Come on, give God praise right now. We're gonna have a fire tunnel. So we're gonna we're gonna shape this area right here for the fire tunnel. If we could have ministry team come and get ready and assume the position, we're gonna we're going to. If you've never been a part of the fire tunnel, part of the fire tunnel, we're gonna make two single file lines right down here, down the center. Just go ahead and get your stuff. Move towards the center of the aisle. Not everybody here has the same core values that we do, so make sure you grab your stuff and take it with you. We're gonna have a fire tunnel. This is gonna be, oh, come on up here. Hey, as we're getting ready, can you guys give Tom a hand? So good. There is a river flowing in here tonight, so you wanna make sure there's gonna be freedom that breaks out in the tunnel. If we can have students are people that have been on ministry team. Um, line up here, and then we've got two lines we're gonna form and wrap around the back if this is your first time tonight. So if I get some of the team, make sure we get two lines here, and we're gonna have one peel off this way and one go through this way. 